engineering is turning science fiction into reality. I'm very proud to be an engineer because that's what I enjoy doing, is taking what looks like science fiction and turning it into something real. Some people refer to me and my colleagues as fathers of the internet, and uh, that actually means a lot because we worked very hard to make this system function. It took 10 years from 1973 when Bob Kahn and I wrote the first specifications and published them in 74 to the time when we could turn the internet on, January of 1983. The internet's been around now for 29 years. We had a very narrow uh, sense of what it was that we were trying to accomplish. We, however, also knew that this was incredibly powerful technology. It has made everyone, every single person in the world potentially a source of um, information communicated literally on a mass basis. That's not only transforming, but we, I don't think we have entirely understood all of the implications of this kind of capability. Nonetheless, um, it is entirely likely that the internet is simply a stopping point between something in the past, the telegraph, the telephone, and something new. One possibility, crazily enough, is called quantum communication, which at the moment doesn't work. Here we have this amazing possibility that everything that is known to mankind could be known and accessed by any one of us in real time, that all knowledge could be made available. And this, we're not there, of course. That's what Google is hoping to accomplish over a period of time, to make the world's information accessible and useful. But we really have a platform now where that's possible. I see a future in which all media become curatable, editable, uh, searchable. Google has worked very hard to move away from just keyboards and pointing as interactive tools to spoken uh, input and output to gestural kinds of input and output. And ultimately, we may end up uh, doing something like the, um, the Media Lab at MIT, the sixth sense notion, where you are wearing not only uh, something that, uh, that lets you see a screen, maybe with Google Glass, um, and hear something, but you can also speak, and the system you're working with can see what you're doing. There are a bunch of things that you can do with computer-based tools if they can participate in the same world that you live in. And here I think we can anticipate a pretty interesting and evolving environment where computers become our partners and not just our tools. I think the most important lesson that I've taken away from my own uh, experience is that it's not enough to be an engineer, it's not enough to be able to design and implement things. You have to provide others with the same vision that you have. You have to imbue them with the same excitement and with the same potential that you can see that's possible. Because you won't achieve the objective if you don't have help. You really need a lot of people to make a big thing happen. And I have been incredibly lucky that my colleagues and I, who started this process so long ago, were successful in getting other people interested in it and who invested time, money, energy, and careers making it happen because they believed in it. And that's what it takes. You have to believe in it to make it happen. Music